Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Tom Green's Webovision. Uh, my name is Mike Hickey. I'm filling in for Tom while he's away doing his stand-up comedy dates. And you can actually see Tom June the 20th at the Amnesia Rock Fest in Montebello, Quebec. Um, June the 25th to the 27th, he's going to be at the Improv in Houston, Texas. And June 28th, he's going to be at Cap City Comedy Club for uh, what I believe is his first show in Austin, Texas. So, uh, you know, everyone go check that out. And hello, Tom, if you're watching. We have a incredible show lined up for you tonight. Um, <clears throat> you know, the nice thing about living in Los Angeles is all of the uh, different interesting people that you get to meet. And uh, not a lot of people are quite as interesting as tonight's guest. Tonight we have with us um, actress, model, and uh, all around LA superstar, Karen Centerfold is joining us tonight. Hello, Karen. Hello, baby, how are you? I am good, thank you so much for coming on our show tonight. Yes, I'm happy to be here. It is actually a joy to have you here. And actually, Karen yes, was babe. cool enough to, uh, she brought in some questions that she wrote out herself. Uh, I thought that that was, that made my job a lot easier. Just these notes that, you know, just, just to help us through the show. So, first thing, first thing, Karen, I saw your film, Jewel, The Jewel of Monte Cristo, which uh, some of the graphics in our introductory segment were taken from that film, which was actually way too hot for us to air tonight on the show. Too hot for you to air? You've got to be kidding, Matt. So, no, no, but we can show some stills. There, there's Karen on the set of Jewel of Monte Cristo. Not only that, but I made Fredericks of Hollywood more famous back then. Oh, really? Is that what you were wearing? Yes. Oh, check it out. Now, there's Karen in the j film The Jewel of Monte Cristo. And I made Fredericks of Hollywood lingerie. Their sale increase on their lingerie, their bras and panties, uh, more productive. It sold more when uh, college students and audience, went to, audience people went to the um, Beverly Cinema on Beverly Boulevard to see that B movie, you know. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of girls then went into stores instantly to buy bras and panties and all these different colors Frederick so Hollywood would sell, right? Mm -hmm. Worked. Of course it did. I mean, that's that was an ad, uh, obviously. Right. But uh, so, Karen, where are you from, and how did you get your start in show business? Well, you see, I am from Los. I'm from um, Oakland. Excuse me, Oakland. Yes, and okay. I came to Los Angeles a long time ago, and um, I got my start working for a concert venue, music people in San Francisco, where I would get up and and MC bands. And um, I got my start in film when I did a bikini contest on Catalina Island. And um, I knew the judges were going to pick me, of course, but I had to be sure. So I had to give a couple of the judges blowjobs. And when I did, obviously I won the contest and they entered me in movies. And I did that one, Jewel of Monte Cristo, back then. Okay, wow. Well, that's. That's exciting. I mean, whatever it takes, right? Right. And <laughs> when it comes to, um, like, I've been playing uh, rock and roll and punk rock um, for a long time. And in San Francisco, I played in a, in a band with Sky Saxon, but it wasn't The Seeds, you know? Yeah, I wanted to it. ask you about your relationship with Sky Saxon and The Seeds. Well, There's my, so many things to ask you. I know, I, don't I, know, even know, I, know. I, I don't even know where to start. There's right. so much to talk about here. Sure, sure. With Sky Saxon, I met him after um, we were at a concert. Um, I was at a concert um, at the Hollywood Bowl, and um, Sky said, you have to live with me to love me. <laughs> you have to love me to get into my music. You have to concentrate and do everything I tell you with the songs. As, in, as a matter of fact, I did a song that's about you, Karen Centerfold, and it's called um, You Can't Be Trusted, you know, and... Um, and he was talking about you? Yeah. I mean, he already did that song before I met him. Oh. <laughs> but when he did that song, the song sort of like says, you can't be trusted. It, the song, if you listen to the song, You Can't Be Trusted, he sings these verses in it like, 
Now I don't, um, it's sort of like he says, um, now I don't want to love you because you, because you run out on me and you show your, your breasts off too much, you know, it's that, it's like that kind of song, you know, and I never really cheated on him, but I was always his in-town girlfriend, I mean to tell you. Oh, I didn't know that you were with Sky Saxon. Oh, yeah. Um, there's films of us on YouTube. There's a film of us on YouTube called Psychedelic Walk that got dedicated to him, and it was shot by a film producer I know. And um, so what happened was we um, fell in, in love, you know, but what happened was he had a lot of problems, like he took drugs and and he had problems with his uh, brain and his mind and a record producer who produced him said he got burnt, he, he got poisoned and um, in spite of all that he made an incredible album called The Seeds and I played with him at Rusty's uh, back in 2003 2002, 2003, and every time he came to town, I would just drop what I was doing, and we would do more recordings and do more shows, but we didn't do them with the seeds. We did them at uh, nightclubs, and uh, it was a great time, and I learned a lot from Sky. Awesome. Well, everyone go out there and uh, check out the seeds and Sky Saxon. Look them up on YouTube, uh, you know see, see uh, who we're talking about here. He's, he's exactly. kind of a legend. Oh, totally. But, uh, okay, so we've got a caller on Skype right now. Um, hey, Joe, you have a question or a comment for Karen and I? I got a question and a comment. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for supporting independent music. I know your documentary about the underground music and all that. That's Karen, awesome. yeah. yeah. Karen is very yeah. into supporting underground music. Yes. I'm big on supporting uh, independent art uh, project like Webble Vision, anything like that. You know, I think it's important to, uh, you know, especially with the devaluation of music nowadays. With the, I don't want to knock on YouTube, but you know, everybody offering all this stuff for free on YouTube. What do you think is the most important with that devaluation of music that's going on right now? What do you think is the most important? Uh, what, what am I trying to say? What What's the best way do you think to keep independent artists in the public eye? The best way to keep independent artists in the public eye is to call me or get in touch with me um, and I will put them in a concert venue because if they are really professional, if they have really got what it takes to uh, attract a lot of people, if their music is all about um, um, really um, rhythm and and what's in style now I put them in a venue a lot of people will show up and they'll get on the internet and it'll it will get them a record deal so try and do that thank you thanks for your call Joe yeah Karen thanks, actually keep up the good work. awesome thanks man Karen uh, promotes concerts and she's she's all she's working in Los Angeles all of the time and it's, it's actually interesting because something I know about you yes. is she's she's displaying it right now is she hates to be bored. She totally. hates having, she hates seeing people bored and she herself hates to be bored. Exactly. So how do we conquer boredom in 2015, Karen? How do we conquer boredom? Obviously, boredom happens when um, you're a very interesting, productive, artistic, uh, left-wing, uh, liberal, but careful uh, artist. And um, what, how you conquer boredom is a lot of people have office jobs like I do. I help, I help immigrants. I do their resumes. I get them lawyers because a lot of labor workers don't want to be kicked out of America because of their citizenship, so I help them, and I'm in an office. I get very bored. I, I also help people um, with disabilities, and um, I put rock bands on TV. When I put rock bands on TV, I don't get bored doing that. When I do my other two jobs, I do. The way you conquer boredom is to be very artistic and um, share your art with as many together people, together meaning uh, somebody who can concentrate on your art and see how interesting and worthwhile it is and uh, present your art, whatever you do, music, painting, or whatever, uh, to as many people, present it in so many proper places in life and um, 
and that's a great way to conquer boredom. Right. Well, it, I know that you know a lot about culture, obviously. Yes, I so do. So I wanted to ask you, what made the Egyptians so great? Hold on. Okay. Let me get my mouth a little bit wetter. Okay, now you ask me, hey, Karen Centerfold, what made the Egyptians such an incredible culture? They built monuments. They fought wars. Not only that, but Cleopatra seduced uh, Mark Anthony and Caesar. And um, what happened was Cleopatra, she gave the best blowjobs in the world. Not only to Mark Anthony, not only to Caesar, but she gave the best head to her armies, her navy, and her marines. And um, she really lived it up for a while until she committed suicide with the asp. You see, the Italians, I mean, the Romans, excuse me, they got jealous of her, and they didn't want her ruling the entire world. And the way she gave blowjobs, they really thought she might. <laughs> Do we have another caller? Mm. Yeah, we do. We have a guy on Skype here. Let's uh, let's go over to him. Hey there. Hi there. How you doing? What's going on? Oh, just another day in paradise. Yeah. Do you got a question for Karen or me? Um. Yeah, I do for Karen. You little sex kitten, you. Um. My question, ma'am. What is your favorite position and why? Um, I like Fair the, question. I, I like the doggy position, and I can tell you're a biker. I used to run with the Hell's Angels up in Oakland, and uh, I didn't mind getting pushed around, but I didn't like the way they would make me do one after the next in one night and um, and uh, yell at me, and they were on speed. They would a yell lot. at you? Yeah, they were on speed a lot, and the, it's the doggy style position. I know you know it good. Because when you do the doggy style position, um, it's easier for you and, um, and things work out better. So thank you. Now, what were they yelling? <coughs> Why would the Hells Angels be yelling at you? Thank you for your call, sir. Why would the Hells Angels be yelling at you? They would yell at me because um, they are a, the most demanding, demanding, successful motorcycle club in America. Okay. Next question. So that's that's how they get that's how they got there was by yelling at people. Uh, yelling at women. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well. And the only people they didn't yell at were was the cops in in Alameda and Oakland. <laughs> All right. Well, Karen, I know that you're a very politically minded person. Yeah. And we're not afraid to get a little bit heavy here on the Webovision talk about some serious stuff. Yeah. Karen, I want to ask you, what do you think would make America a better place to live? What would make America a better place to live in, my Yeah. What? If we got a hold of George Bush and we put him in prison and we got all our money back, $80 billion he took from some big shot in Bel Air, um, to fight the war in Iraq, and he paid everyone back, all the labor workers, all the tax um, taxes Americans paid. America would be a better place to live in, and it would be a really good thing to make him go to prison because it didn't cost that much money to fight that war in Iraq. It he did that to strengthen the Republican, phony, hypocritical uh, politics, and he used that money to pay off oil barons. And that is one thing that we, would make America a better place to live in. Okay, well, from Hell's Angels to politics, uh, Karen, you're a woman of many hats. Uh, but listen, what's your favorite band, since I know you love music so much? And also, it's here on these a notes. A band I met that first... Um, came to San Francisco, and, and uh, I still know um, Johnny of that band, uh, the Sex Pistols. Oh, yeah, you know the Sex Pistols, right? Oh, uh, no, I uh, met the Sex Pistols, and um, I, saw well, them. I, I saw them in San Francisco, and uh, I mean, it was a whole new scene. It was a whole new energy form of music, and, and all the hippie people were stoning me. They were telling me... Um, 
um, how could you possibly listen to that pukey garbage music? And I said, it makes it. It totally makes it. It's what's happening. It's more energy. And I didn't say it was better. I said it was more energy yeah. and, and more a bit more thrilling. And, um, and so I just went on sort of like Jimmy Kimmel, that mm -hmm. show, and I saw Johnny Rotten's uh, new band. I forgot their name, Phil something. Um, I forgot his new band's name. But I was the one yelling out the Sex Pistols, and um, he's still ha Johnny Rotten is still happening, <laughs> you know. And that was mm -hmm. a few years ago. That was when I got. That was when um, the uh, Republicans were trying to to not get Obama elected. What's your next question? Okay, guys, if anyone wants to call in, the number here is 818-556-1549. If you have a question for Karen, the number is 818 556 1549 and uh, you also I want to know I wanted to ask you about your style and your fashion uh, my style and my fashion is uh, usually a mini skirt uh, go-go boots uh, to the knee or thigh-high boots and long angel hair and uh, light frosted lipstick and caterpillar uh, and Cleopatra eye makeup and fit in shape um, um, hourglass bod and I think that most other women the way they dress are like sissies and weaklings mm. and that's my fashion statement for the year okay well here on, on the notes that you sent me there's a question here that's a good one I think uh, if, if a girl were to be sent to hell by God what would be the worst thing God would do to her the worst thing God could possibly do to her is put her in a room with a, a bigot like Rodney Binghamheimer of K-Rock Radio. And, um, a and what? The worst thing that God could possibly do is put her in a room and, and make her have sex with a prejudice disc jockey like Rodney Binghamheimer. And that would be a bummer. You trying to stir the beehive up here in, uh, in Los Angeles? Of course I am. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm trying to do. <laughs> so Karen, I know that you've acted in a lot of B movies and yeah. uh, we, we, we call it softcore or hardcore. What, what, what kind of movies did you do? Could you talk to us a bit about your movie career? Oh, sure, you know. And I know that you had films play at the Pussycat Theater on Western back uh, yeah. when it existed, which does not, no longer exist anymore. Um, yes. But you were a marquee name? Yes, I was. All right. Um, uh, I'd love for our audience to hear I a little did, bit about that. I, I did a film um, called Touch of Comfort, and um, I did the sequel to the Pussycat Ranch. And, um, you know, that was then, you know, and uh, today everybody's on the Internet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yes, they are. So what was your question? Well, I just wanted you to talk to us about your film career in these films. And really, I didn't know if you did hardcore, softcore, uh, or uh, more soap R -rated, operas. More R-rated. R-rated? R-rated. A hard films. R or a soft R? Uh, both. And I would just be around town or on the beach, mm -hmm. and I would get these film producers to give me an offer and they would tell me uh, about the film and I would read a script and I would do it and it would be a big deal and one thing is is I would do these B movies and I would um, go to some of them and I would sit in the very very back of the theater and I would see the reaction and um, what was the reaction? Well, guys would be sweating, and if they were with their girlfriend, and their girlfriend would be talking to them, all they could say is, what, 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 like that. Trying to distract them from what was going on on exactly. the screen? Exactly. It, it, <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. Really? And uh, they would, some guys would laugh, um, and, um, and like, um, I'm in a film about bikers, how they fight each other, and at the very end, I'm wearing a leather black bomber and I'm wearing nothing else underneath it and I'm really showing myself off and um, you know that was a big deal they would whistle and so um, I did quite a few I did like about 12 and they would show in movie theaters 
And um, it was a, a big deal for a while. Sometimes it still is, but it's more like on the internet these days. Right. And it's always thrilling to break the monotony and get guys and girls and most and a lot of college students uh, to give them a real big thrill. Right on. Now, did you? But by the way, if everyone, if anyone wants to call in, it's eight one eight five five six fifteen forty nine. And I want to know, did you date Ron Jeremy? Yeah, I dated him four years ago at a club called Pear Space, Sean Carnage's uh, Pear Space mm -hmm. here in L.A. And Ron is romantic, he's serious, he's got a heart of gold and a hard-on of gold. And um, he's also a serious person, originally from uh, Queens, New York. And I met him at Studio 54 back in the day, and, um, and he's still doing good, you know? Karen Centerfold, um in living up to your name, how many centerfolds have you done? I don't know, because I had a manager that kept picking me up in his Rolls Royce or in his Mercedes of all the places I lived, and I would have a centerfold down. And I got my name actually from Paul and Shirley's L.A. Star newspaper. Like, that's one uh, newspaper I did... Uh, probably my third uh, centerfold in. And I think we got a question. Well, we have a phone call here. Hello, caller. Who are you and where are you calling from, please? Hey, my name's Chris. I'm in Alabama. Chris in Alabama. Welcome to the show. Do you have a question for Karen? Yeah, I was looking on the internet earlier and I saw to relate it to a past show I watched a week or two ago. She, was, uh, she had her painting done. Oh, by, yeah. Uh, Let, Mr. Let's Paint TV. Yeah. Yes. Karen actually wait, did have wait. her painting done by Mr. Let's Paint, a, a Webovision guest as well. So uh, actually, you know what? Hold the line, and Karen, we're going to roll that uh, a little bit of that clip right now. Oh, okay, we lost the clip. That's okay. We, we were going to show that, but... Uh, oh, we got it? Okay, well, whatever. Okay, here it is. Here's the clip. Well, there, there may be some delay on it, but... That's cool that you looked that up, man. You know what? Don't worry about the clip, guys. Thank you for your call. But, uh, well, that, no, that is cool that you went, went on the Mr. Let's Paint TV show. We had yeah, him in that chair. Yeah, he's a friend of mine. He's a, John is a friend of mine, and he had a great time painting a modernistic uh, impression of me, you know, naked. And um, he has lived up to his name on uh, the Let's Paint show. In fact, nobody could top him. Yeah. You know, it's the, the interesting thing about you being on this show and, you know, being on Mr. Let's Paint, you know, these are internet sort of television shows. And I know that you hate text messaging. I do. You hate computers. I do. You hate Facebook. No, not totally. What's going on is a lot of people would hack my, my um, Facebook page and other things, and it's just so much to deal with. I think people should just make phone calls to each other and work in person but there's a lot you can do obviously on a computer to make it better here we got that caller online still uh we have another call hold the line skype man uh well we had someone but we, we lost them call, call back we're, we're we're still here okay but it's just i personally i hate the phone because i'm all i'm busy 24 7. yeah and i'm in the middle of something and my phone rings i mean i usually don't even i don't ever have my ringer on I never uh, hear the phone. I simply text. Yes. So it was, it was hard, you and I, connecting for today's show, but I'm glad that we did. But we did, you And know, I'm glad that you're here. Because we're friends. Yeah, we and, are friends. And we run I, in the same I circles. I want to star you in a musical because I did nude musicals in New York and one here in L.A., you know, and I want to put you in a big musical, Mike, because you're Mike the Greatest Entertainer. Next question. All right. Well, you know about Tiny Tim, right? I do, Yes. Oh. I knew about Tiny Tim. Okay, go, well, we, we have a caller. I, I, I still want to hear about this. Hello, caller on the phone. Hello. Hi, how are you doing, y'all? Hey, how's it going? I was, uh, wanted to know if you were trying to uh, revive your sex career. Uh, you mean reevaluate my sex career? Okay, okay, we can say that. Um... My sex career is very calculated, and I'm very picky about it. I have been most successful with rock stars, football players, and, of course, surfers and all-around 
country boys just like you. Yeah. Next question. When were you active? I'm active when the time is right and the going gets good. That's cool. You know, it's it's. I like when these people call up and ask these questions. I mean, we're such good friends that it's. I can't ask you right, about these questions. Question. I can't ask you questions like that. You can, that would be out of you line. Can. No, it's not. Privately, privately. <laughs> All right, let's go over to Skype here. Uh, we have a gentleman on Skype. How you doing, sir? Hey, good evening. How are you? We're okay. Do you have a question for Karen? Well, I I, I have uh, a couple actually. Um, I was wondering what her. Um, how, how she's dealt with uh, social media and has it helped or hindered her career? Um, social media, um, yes. I have worked with social media mostly on being an anti-Iraq war activist, anti-war um, um, activist, and it has helped my career, definitely. And, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, being interviewed more in, in uh, the media on the latest on who will be president, okay? Yes. Because, uh, okay. because um, um, Mike is going to be asking me, I did predict that Obama yeah, would she win. She predicted Obama would win. And how did you know that Obama would win? Because, because I grew up in Oakland, California, and when a good-looking white girl like me is around all the good-looking smart uh, soul brothers, they just tell me what's happening, and, and when I ask them, do you think this senator from Chicago, Barack Obama, is going to win? They, when, when a black man says to me, they stand a damn good chance, he's going to win, and that's how I knew it, and, that, and so because I knew it, I went to UCLA, I got up in front of a, a, what looked like a million college students, I told them Obama would win and a lot of them didn't believe me but more than half of them did because they didn't want John McCain okay oh, they didn't hi oh That's hello we have a caller on the phone now hold the line I'm Skype going to ask Karen some questions. oh okay well go for it sure why not uh, okay great um Karen it's BB what um is your secret with your hair and can you help me uh, the secret with my hair is a lot of vitamin E, and especially when it comes from a man's genitals. Like if you can get your boyfriend or your husband or six guys to put some of the sperm um, on your hair before you shampoo it, um, it's a great idea. Next question. <laughs> Next question. Next question How on the phone. How do you do it? How do you do it? Well, a guy gets himself off on your hair, and uh, <laughs> you you put all these different vitamin E shampoos uh -huh, uh -huh. in in with it, uh -huh, uh -huh, and uh -huh. then you you get it rinsed with uh, some more vitamin E shampoo, and it works out great, especially for conditioning. And Next, Karen, I have another question. How do you do everything else that you do? Okay, how do you do it? Full explanation from the beginning. All the way up until right now. I am dying to know. It's easy. I just get up. I meditate. I do yoga through yoga teachers. And I remember everything all the people in San Francisco told me to do when I was a little girl, it, which is be the most original, the most unique, be the most creative, and, and work very hard, uh -huh. and make sure your intellect uh -huh. is uh -huh. balanced with justice. Uh, mm -hmm. where you can project oh. and promote love and practice it and receive it. Next question, And Karen, Mike. when is your next performance? Where is your next event? Um, my next event uh, live will be at a place, a club called Vermanklin on, mm -hmm. on um, Vermanklin. I love it. It's oh. a club oh, on yes. Franklin oh, Avenue right, right off Vermont. <laughs> Right off Vermont. Okay, thank you, caller. Thank you for your call, BB. That was awesome. Oh, okay. Let's go back to the Skype guy. We 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 kind of cut him off by mistake. Okay. Um, no problem. No. Do, do you have a second question before we move on? Well, forget about the presidential election and all the other uh, social media stuff. This this conversation got really interesting right now. <laughs> so so you predicted Barack Obama. Who are you pulling for right now? Um. Well, you know what. I want Hillary to 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 possibly win, okay? Because we don't want George Bush's Jeb to win to Not win. Um, but uh, the thing, the reason people have reluctance on 
on having Hillary win um, is because most men make their decisions with rational behavior. Most women make their decisions with their emotions, but I'm sure Hillary is making her decisions with a lot of rational behavior, but there's a strong possibility Hillary will win, and there's, there's other possibilities that other um, nominee, that Donald Trump, you know, there's a chance, but we don't know yet, and I have to get further into the election, and by the way, you look really good. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, you look like a cowboy. I, I went into a barn with one time, so when I come back on, on Mike's show, I'll talk about that later, and I want you to call in at that time. So thank you very much. And, Mike, let's move on to the next question that you have for me. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you for your call. Thanks so much right, for calling. Bye. Oh, my God, Karen. Okay, next question, It is Mike. so good to have you here on the show on this I know, tonight. so let's pack in all the questions. Let's get them all. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to keep going through these. She, Karen was cool enough to bring her own questions. Uh, we, we covered that one. We've covered this one. Okay. We've gotten through a lot of these. Okay, go on, babe. Okay. Uh, oh, yes. I want to talk to you about Deathbred. Yes. So you interviewed Deathbred. You had a relationship with the band. Yes. Deathbred. The members of Deathbred are Heavy Thunder on bass. And I was just with him last night at the Hush Club. And Don Bulls, the drummer of the Germs, on drums. And, of course, Deathy Hun the blonde guy with all his weird get-ups and gear, leather and crucifixes. Um, I interviewed him in 2003, and he was awesome. I used to help him out and drive him up to uh, Don Bull's um, house in Eagle Rock and or Atwater. And um, he just... Uh, um, I like promoted him, I put him on my show, I interviewed him really good. In fact, Tom Green interviewed him where he was really depressed and he didn't treat his depression and he was a major rock star. I mean, like even when he started out at the Troubadour, there was the crowd was a mile long, you know, and um, what happened was he didn't treat his depression, he ran out of money for heroin, then um, he, I drove him to the um, to a club he hugged me in a very weird way and apparently then he hitchhiked after he punched Don Bulls out in the mouth he hitchhiked out to the first and grand studio in Santa Ana he rehearsed with my friend Glenn Lloyd of the band Vitamin X I was in where I was the lead singer and he said he was going on a journey and he hung himself from a tree to be a legend, which he was in the first place. He didn't have to hang himself and kill himself, but he did it because he ran out of money for heroin and he was sick about life, you know. And um, I'm going to be doing a documentary. I'm going to be in a documentary on him, and it'll be a really good thing, and it was a shame he died. Yes, it was, yeah. I, I've heard a lot about him from Don. Don yeah. Had, even, mm -hmm. even though him and Don had kind of a rough relationship at points. They did. Don, I know Don misses him. And, uh, we, bo we both do, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Karen, we're, we're, we're coming to the end of the Karen Centerfold segment. Okay, we so ask me as many questions as you Okay, I'm, I'm just going to throw them all out. Karen right. is rock dead. Karen is Don Bowles a Nazi. No. Nope, Have you nope. ever blamed Jesus for anything? Yeah, my him Iggy right. Pop. Iggy Pop. I promoted him at one time. Go on. Uh, you have blamed Jesus for your hemorrhoids? I have blamed Jesus, Jesus Christ for my hemorrhoids, yes. <laughs> and uh, are you in the new David Bowie documentary? Yes. Really? In, yes. Go on, go Incredible. on. Incredible. Next question. Uh, Tiny Tim. I think that, that, we, that literally covers everything that we had here. Okay, keep going. Any other questions? No. I mean, my, my, my questions are endless, and they're going to go on forever. Well, Master, I think In today, conclusion? In conclusion, Sim Sim Salabim, Master. And we will do many other shows and questions. Absolutely. All right, everyone out there, the show is not over. Don't worry. We have a whole second half coming with Code Red Bill. Bill from Code Red DVD is here with us tonight. A another interesting and a very cool guest to have. So, um, Mike, if you want to, uh, you know, oh, I just want to say, we met through the Fancy Space people. When yes, I first moved to L.A. and I was sort of getting into the whole thing here, 
I would always go see one of my favorite bands, Fancy Space People, right. and Karen would introduce them all the time. Yes. So that was my first exposure to you. You were throwing confetti all over. Yes. Uh, and we've since become very good friends. And now sometimes you even introduce me. Yeah, I do. So, Mike, while we're switching microphones for Bill, why don't we roll the Fancy Space People clip, and uh, we'll be right back with some more Webovision. All right. Shows in one today. Thanks, Karen Centerfold. That was that was an amazing appearance by Karen Centerfold. And right now on the show with us, we have uh, Code Red Bill. Now, Code Red Bill, he he, he is a successful businessman that I've met uh, <laughs> in my many adventures here in Los Angeles. He's a very successful businessman with a a DVD business. He he releases films. I've just got I mean hundreds of movies. Just a few that I want to throw out: Messiah of Evil which is an amazing early 70s uh, zombie film. Night of the Demon, which is the legendary Bigfoot film with the infamous dick ripping scene. Uh, the Visitor, which is, you know, Bill put that out and since then it's been re-released by another company and it's just yeah. blown right up. I mean, it's, it's really, it's kind of a cult film. Look up The Visitor, it's absolutely yeah, incredible. Look up, look up my Visitor. Look up yeah. Code Red version. I still got two and a half more years left on the rights. So. Nail Gun Massacre, Love Me <laughs> Deadly, the, the Get necrophiliac it. movie, yes. Don't Go in the Woods Alone, Butcher Baker, Nightmare Maker, yes. starring uh, Jimmy McNichol and Susan Tyrell. I mean, yes. this is just a small, tiny handful. Bill, Yes. thanks for coming to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. So how yes. in the hell did you end up in the film releasing business or the film business at all? Well, I had a video store. I had two stores. And, uh, you know, it's kind of migrated to that. I mean... Where at? Seattle. So you had a video store in yeah, Seattle? Yeah, yeah. And just decided one day, I'm going to put out a DVD. Yeah, I mean, where can you go? I mean, video's gone, so yeah. where can you go? All right. Kind of faded away to something else. But. And did it blow up big pretty fast for you? Because you, you were dealing in pretty, like, specific areas of film. I guess. I mean, I can't get the studio movies, so I just took the little movies. I mean, you know. Are these, is that your preference? Is that the kind of films that's that you I like? Can get, that's all I could get. I can't get studio movies. I'm not, you know, I'm so not you some rich kid. You don't can, care about these movies. You just... You, you can Lately, them. not too much. <laughs> Lately, not too much. Yeah. I mean, do, have you watched Night of the Demon? Are you a fan of the movie? I watched it. I mean, it's not much you could say about the movie. I mean, it's an unfinished movie that they just patch it up and got a gay porn star getting his dick ripped out. I mean, not too much you could say about that movie. I mean, it's kind of... <laughs> I think, think there would be a lot got, you could say about that, but... It's a cheap movie. That's what it is. It was so. cheap? It was cheap. Do you have the rights forever? Uh, no, I made a deal with VCX, the porn company, and they... They actually gave me a tape master, so <laughs> that's what I did. So <laughs> I deal with porn producers to mobsters to whatever. Whoever doesn't want to deal, come to me. You know, they can't get the big guys, so I get the little strange little guys. So are 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 these types of films? Is is that your area of interest? 
cinematically speaking? Well, I'd like to do, put some studio movies, but uh, it's not going to come to me. There's nothing I could do, so it's kind of, I take what's out there. I mean, I'm not picky, so... So I you'd rather be dealing in the majors? Yeah, yeah, but it's, unfortunately I can't because... But you're just on the fringes of... of you're like, just on the fringe of entertainment. Fringe of, yeah, fringe of entertainment. But yeah. it works for you. I guess it works. I mean, it brought pays us. The, it pays the bill. It, it brought us bill. together. Well, Damon brought us together. Well, Damon, Damon Pat, yeah, but you know the Damon whole Patrick. film thing. Who could be a big filmmaker, but he just doesn't. Uh, apply Damon himself. is a big filmmaker. Well, Damon makes amazing film. Damon Packard, we're talking about. I met uh, Bill through Damon Packard. You know, Damon's uh, an amazing film director. He's a much talked about, much talked about uh, guy here on. He texts me three o'clock at night asking for donuts. Damon, it's Donut Hut, Donut Hut. That's what he ever says. Well, you and, you and Damon have a Donut Hut thing. Well, I don't like donuts. I mean, it's, it's something that's only open at night that's cheap. So if I have to buy him dinner, it's, I mean, late night snack, it's not expensive. You know? Right, right. Yeah. Um. Got a, got a, <laughs> yeah, got we, do, we, we have, we have a, a Skype Moses caller. Here. We might as well go it's over got a clown to this guy. On the wall. How you doing, Skyper? Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks a lot for having me on. And, Bill, i got to say right off the bat, thank you for everything you've done. Oh, thank you. Oh, do you oh, know right, Code so. Red DVD? Yeah, man, like crazy. Um, I, I mean, hell, I mean, old old cult films are the you know it's the only thing out there, especially with the crap that they released today. You're a hero, buddy, yeah, in my thank eyes. You. Thank you. You like clowns? Um, a clown I, well, I am a clown. Oh, yeah. you're a clown. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't clown for kids anymore because that's bullshit. I'm an evil clown. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'd like to ask. Um, yeah. What's been the hardest movie that you've ever had to get on the DVD? With all the hassles well, with well, people screwing with you. Surely there was some. Well, I got Good question. competitors always screw with me. I mean, they always, they always trying to tell my rights on I'm dishonest and all that crap. And most movies I do have trouble because I just, rights on get scared of me, even though some of these guys know me for a while back. And Who gets get, scared of you? Some rights on it actually, I actually get scared because other labels actually call them, say, don't deal with me, I'm a crook. So I lose some movies. Really? Yeah. So, uh, so there's a lot always. of competition out there in the DVD. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they view, I don't think anyone in Paramount would call someone in Warner Brothers to do this, but DVD company is kind of a cutthroat business. So that's what they, they kind of run the business that way, some of these guys. But anyway. Well, I'm, I would say even actors, no? Excuse me, but uh, even actors, I'd say, would come after you at some points if the director and producer wouldn't come after you, right? No, I, I had trouble with Tobey Hooper. For uh, my recent release, because he said th he said he owned the movie. And what movie? Spontaneous combustion. He said he owned it, and the guy who owns it uh, is a powerful lawyer in Beverly Hills. And he said, "No way, I own it." So he came after his lawyer, and the law his lawyer backed off. So well, why why did Hooper think he owned it, or what's his connection to it? No, you know when you did I don't want to I don't want to badmouth him, but you know when you yes, when you, you when you when you uh, when you breathe through certain what? things, your mind gets in in a weird dimension. You know, you know, breathe through white things, your mind getting another, another plan. <laughs> um, I don't want to get into it. You're talking about what he's inhaling. <laughs> yes, I, I think he's 72. I, I respect him, and that's all I could say about him. And uh, I don't know. He just he doesn't own the movie. <laughs> all right. Well, if anyone out there watching, thank you for your call, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Always nice thanks. to see you. Thanks. Thank you. Big fan of both of you guys. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. Okay, thank thanks. you thank so you. much. Thank and you. if anyone wants to call in and talk to Bill, the number is 818-556-1549. One more time, pick up your phone, 818-556-1549. So, Bill. Yes. In 2015, I know the DVD market can't be what it used to be, even five years ago. No, it isn't. Let alone ten years ago. It's pretty bad. It, like, how, can you keep it going? I could try, but, you know, when I read these other labels, they complain, I only sold 3,000 copies. I don't sell 3,000 copies. I, it's milk if I sell 500, and they, they're bitching you only sell 3,000 uh, 3, copies. You spoil little rich brat. I mean, someone should slap you. <laughs> rich brat. I mean, some guy can play, hey, you sold 3,000, good movie didn't do well. Yeah, frankly, you did fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand why you complain. Just because everyone thinks you're God, fuck you. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking maggot. Fucking teabagger. That's what he's a fucking teabagger. Anyway, never mind about teabagging, but. No, no, tea yeah. bagging. What, what's that about tea bagging? Uh, you know, well, you know, tea, tea bag. You know, yeah. I don't. You know, it's, uh, you know, pass the sauce. I guess they're passing the sauce with the yeah. business partners. I guess. Anyway, I just, I just upset when I see other labels complain. Yeah. They only sold so little, and the little is very large numbers. Right. 
Well, I mean, I, I've actually been on your the Code Red DVD blog, which you can all go to, just <laughs> Code Red. And I, I love the blog. There's a lot of uh, passion in there. I mean, I, I know you personally, so I know you get worked up. But there's a lot of there's a lot of sort of worked up kind of energy. I noticed something that you wrote on the just. By the way, Just Before Dawn is one of my favorite early 80s slasher films. Jeff Lieberman, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's kind of a, you know, it's, it's a lesser known film, but the people that know it love it. And I think it's kind of having a bit of a resurgence. Uh, are you the only guy with the rights to put that out right now, Just Before Dawn? Uh, yes, it's been bootlegged in England and other countries, but uh, the rights owner copyrighted it, and these guys still think they can steal it, but it's been copywritten. And, uh, Vlado, the guy who owns the movie, actually uh, takes care of the movie, but unfortunately, uh, some people think they own the movie. That's the problem. So. Yeah. And he didn't make any money out of that movie, unfortunately. The movie didn't do that well <laughs> for him. Really? How, yeah. how's, it doing? how's it done for you? It's okay. Because okay. you had a really nice version of that out, right? Yeah, I actually took it from the negatives, but unfortunately, you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I had trouble getting much publicity out of it because, you know, I don't want to pick on the director, but he kind of called my release fake, you know, bootleg. Really? because he made the movie, but you know, frankly, the guy who financed and put up the money and copyrighted the movie is the owner, so. But you, do, do you pay to have the, the negatives like restored and all Yeah, that? I actually do. So you front all that? Yeah, I, I front all that and that's deductible. That can't be cheap. No, it's not. Yeah. I actually did like three movies we yesterday, so. Oh. oh, we had a call, we lost it. Oh, we lost them. Call but, back. Uh, but I love Just Before yes. Dawn, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm st but I was stoked when I saw that uh, on the blog. I'm thinking of making a remake of that movie right Really? Now. I'm talking with uh, Vlado about remaking it, and uh, maybe I could. I mean, I was, you know, I don't know. It's kind of hard to make a movie these days. Well, I wanted to, that was, a, I was yes, going right. to go there. I mean, uh, you, you know everything about the business. I was wondering why you and I haven't worked together on a project. Hello, phone caller. Hi there, do you have a question for Bill? Yes, sir, I do. How you doing, Bill? Hey. This is Toddy Walnuts. I'm just wondering if you're going to ever um, reprint uh, Neon Maniacs. Todd Walnut, he's a music. Aren't you a filmmaker, a musician or something? <laughs> someone no, told I'm me you're a musician. A, no, I'm not a filmmaker. I'm just a fan of, of your oh, work. Oh, it's a fan. I thought someone... Uh, maybe I'm getting to Todd Sheets. That's someone else. Oh, I thought Todd Sheets was a good filmmaker. Yeah, anyway, anyway. Uh, Anyway, yeah, I'm going to repress it, but, you know, these you guys got to understand, if I say limited 1,000, it's limited 1,000, because I'll repress it, but people, the little trolls saying, what did I even buy it to begin with? He's repressing it. It's like, no one, people are too busy buying the other labels. They didn't buy my shit, and now, now it's gone. I mean, I'll repress it, but unfortunately, you know, these guys like Vinegar Syndrome, Synapse, they price 10,000 of these fucking things. They'll be around for five years. I'm not gonna be out for five years. I won't be uh, most likely. I won't be alive for five years. So you know, <laughs> buy my shit first. These guys are rich. They're getting money from whoever they the, the, whoever they are. They, they got money coming. The guy bought two condos. They're rich. I'm not rich. I live in a fucking smelly old tell. Buy my stuff because I can, if I press it one more, the second time, that's it. I can't do it again because you know some troll coming goes. What did I even buy at the beginning? Well, I'll just wait till it goes disappear. I mean, you know, that, that, buy it, buy it. Like I'll pre-press it. Well, um, I know it was hard to get Savage Streets, too, and, and I missed those, too. I finally did get Savage Streets, but I'm, I'm kind of hoping that you're going to put me on Maniacs out, but if you can't, I understand. I'll put it out. I mean, I'll, there's enough requests, but uh, it's limited, so once it's gone, it's gone. I mean, you know. Well, hey, man, thank it. you for your yeah. call, and uh, if you want to call us, Thanks the number a lot, is 818 556 uh, so he really wants you to re-release Neon Maniacs. Yeah, these these limited releases kind of tough to sell, but uh, you know. That's another movie that for years you didn't hear about, and I'm hearing a lot about it lately. I mean, I've seen it. It doesn't make <laughs> any sense. Well, there's an expra explanation on the movie that why it didn't make any sense because the director didn't know what he was doing, and the right the right actually killed himself. It's not sad he killed himself. That is sad. He couldn't pay his rent, so he killed himself. It's really sad. <laughs> anyway. Butcher Baker, Nightmare Maker. What yes. was the other title of that? Uh, Night Warning, yeah. Night Warning, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, major problem with that. Some couple of people, one of another label said I was bootlegging the movie, and uh, I had to get a lawyer and straighten it out. I wasn't bootlegging, it was just uh, smoke screen. So. We have a caller. Yeah. Hello, how you doing? Doing yeah. all right. Yeah. You have a question for Bill? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. A uh, uh, really quick one. Uh, yeah. Brotherhood of Death, and uh, what's in that pocket of yours? I'm eager to know. This is Kleenex, right. this fifth, 99 cent store chocolate called Choco Nuts or whatever. I can't show it. Cell phone and a, and a hotel key card. That's it, man. 
Does that answer your question? I don't have a Doc Johnson dildo in my pocket, but uh, that's what I have, man. You know Doc Johnson? Oh, he hanged up. He you knows you know Doc Johnson. <laughs> Doc Johnson's a uh, dodo company. He got the answer that he wanted. He didn't, yeah, he didn't want. He hanged up. He's shy. All right. Hey, um, Mike, yeah. we're now going to play a trailer for uh, Shark Treasure. Treasure. Yes, yes. Roll it. It's a fun movie. Somewhere in these waters, there's a treasure worth a fortune in gold. The treasure is waiting for anybody who wants it. The sharks are waiting for everyone who tries. Four men are heading straight into the jaws of death. They're going to get the shark's treasure or die trying. This is the story of the deadliest treasure hunt ever undertaken. It is a story that was filmed at the risk of life and limb. The captain. He thought he saw every hell on earth, but he never faced the terror of Shark's treasure. We have a caller. Yeah, this is me. Hi, yeah, do you have me. a question for Bill? Hi, Mr. Me. Uh, yeah. Yes, I was asking, uh, would you yeah. like to uh, direct a porn movie with me in it? Me a porn director? I can I guess Ron. Ron Jelly could direct. He wants it. to know if you want to direct him in a porn. No, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I know porn people, but no, it's okay. Well, we need to see well, pictures. Qu question is, do you have the wood to do it? We need, we need at least seven, eight, th 12 inches to do this action scene, so. Oh, Jesus, really? Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> I should, I'm about half that. Yeah, half that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Okay, well, thank you anyways. You know, I was yeah, yeah. I, I tried to make Peace, something man. funny to see if uh, he was more active. Yeah, you, you should go to, there's a website, Doc Johnson sells equipment that you can play with. And you can go over there. <laughs> you have specials, Doc Johnson special. You should go to Doc Johnson, all your kids. If you feel like if you have something to show up your behind, go, go to Doc Johnson and you can enjoy your little life. <laughs> okay. All right. Peace, man. Thank Thanks you. for your call. Peace, man. What was that all about? Uh, he just wanted to audition for the porn that you're not doing. I'm uh, not porn. Like, give yeah. Me, give me a freaking break. There's so many out there. What's, what's you know, it would be like no different than any other crap that's out there. I mean, right. But Shark's uh, Treasure, now, that is your favorite movie that, that, that no, you... It's uh, funny because Cornell Wilde made this crazy sh treasure movie and uh, Jaws, that's, Jaws was, Jaws was popular, so they put a shark and Shark's only a small part in the movie. Uh, he's not really a lead. Uh, it's basically Yapakoto and Cornell and, and this younger kid go deep sea diving for looking, tre looking for treasures and these I don't know why we did a 180 on the movie these prisoners come on the ship and they had a little boy with them named Juanito they call him Juanito mm -hmm. and realize Lobo the main guy Juanito's his bitch it's this white kid named Juanito and Lobo pushed him around his real name is Johnny but the way he pushed him around like sometime he gets me so mad slaps him all that you could tell he's a bitch and he said, I didn't want to go to prison. You made me leave or something. It's a really dynamic movie because it captures that shit out of nowhere when it's a shark treasure movie. Right. And, and I, should give, I shouldn't give away the ending, but there's a scene where Juanito's running, well, Johnny's running away. He's running in the sea, sea trying to kill himself. And Lobo's chasing. He goes, Juanito, come back, buddy. Then he paused for a second and looked at him and goes, Johnny, come back, John." Called him by his real name. <laughs> he run in the water. They both die. <laughs> I mean, real Sharks, dynamic scene. Sharks Treasure available. It's not on, it's not, I think it's DVD Burn On Demand, I think on Amazon, but it's really funny. I brought the Yapid Koto at an autograph, the autograph signing, and Yapid just kept laughing. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that movie. <laughs> it's Corner Wild Gay. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> kept we, laughing at it. We have a caller okay, here Okay, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, caller. Yeah. Uh, I was calling for Karen Centerfold. Oh. oh, well, she's still in the building. Anything? Oh. Is she still answering questions? Or She's is she waving. Gone? She's waving at me. Well, She's waving at us. I mean, Bill's Bill's in the chair right now, so I guess you're gonna have to save it for the next time. Okay, thank you. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Sorry, sorry, cute girl. She had that kind of voice, right? Yeah, but she's probably a lady, probably most likely. I mean, you, know, <laughs> you, you can't judge by the voice. I mean, you know, she could be a, could be a, I don't know, could be a guy. We don't know. Karen was great on the show, though, right? Yeah, Bill? yes, yes, everyone was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's Tom? 
Tom? Where's Tom? Tom is, uh, he's off, he's he working. Want, he's afraid of me. That's why he doesn't want to do the show. No. No, yeah, no, no, no. You guys, we're all, we're, we're all working together right now. Could you, could you get Seth Green in there? Some of the green? All the greens are busy? <laughs> as, long as, as long as some greens. All the greens are busy. Okay, well, you. So, you, listen. Yeah, okay, are you ahead. getting into producing films or what? I was trying for a while, but the money's pretty tough. Yeah. Are, you, mean, are you going uh, to get behind uh, Damon Packard's Yuppie Fear Thriller? I tried, but Damon just doesn't want, doesn't want to take direction. He didn't want to take he your money. He wants to do it his way. No, he's the director. Yeah, but he, he she shoots little little at a time. And it's like, you know, you can't do a movie the way he's doing. I mean, you got to have a, at least a 10-day shooting schedule. He just shoots when he has a camera. It's it's pretty sad what Damon does. I mean, you know, and and once once he finished the movie, how long would the movie be? 48 minutes? I mean... Well, we'll see. That's we'll be nine, 80 minutes to make to sell the movie. I mean, it's pretty tough to make a film with zero budget, which well, is which is what we're working with. Well, that's true. That's true. That's but it true. looks good, right? You've you've seen the trailers. No, I didn't. You haven't seen the trailer? <laughs> uh, Damon could donate blood. I guess he could donate blood and other things, but he has car problems right now. So I guess he needs to fix that car problem. So I want you to donate money to Damon. PayPal him. Uh, was it Space Disco at something? Yeah. PayPal him. He needs he needs a new uh, new timing chain, wasn't it? I don't know. I think if, if you want to take Code Red to the next level, you're going to have to uh, yeah. get, get in the Damon Packard business. Yes, yes, Damon, yes. <laughs> but that's Damon, though. So anyway, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's been pretty hot in L.A., so it enjoy, has, yeah. enjoying the sun. I actually go out to uh, hang out with the street people out here, they actually perform and all that. It's yeah. kind of fun. Really? Yeah, n n good people out there. Oh. Better than some of the people I meet in the DVD business. Well, Bill, is there anything that you'd like to say to our WebOvision audience before we wrap up today's oh, episode? Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh, well, buy something. Yeah. <laughs> buy it before I go out of business. Tell then, them how and where. Uh, you can buy my website, coreddvd.com, and you can buy it there and uh, hold on to it, and maybe it'll be worth money later because some is worth 100 bucks. Yeah? Some of the DVDs. Some of the early Well, I can't give away. It was 100 bucks. Yeah. One of them, one of them was actually $199 on Amazon. I looked at my warehouse. I still got like 300 left. <laughs> I'm like, if I put it out for 199 bucks in my store, they get angry. If I sell it to 10 bucks in my store, some bozo will buy it and sell for 109 bucks. So it's like, no, I just because get... it's offered for sale for 199, no one's actually buying it for 199. They just I, set I would the say price. that, but there's so many below them that went away. Yeah. So they paid, they paid 70 bucks. They paid 8 bucks. So some idiot paid all that money for a movie no one wants. So. Okay. It happens, so the, uh, I, I don't know. I should put them on, on eBay, but not make them on my website. But unfortunately, every time I put it out any higher than 15, 25 bucks, they get angry. But hmm. got to pay the rent. Still all money, so. All right, <laughs> everyone, uh, thank you for watching today's show. I want to thank Code Red Bill for coming on the show today. Thank it you. It was uh, good to have you. And of course, I want to thank uh, Karen Centerfold for her incredible appearance here on Webovision. I'm sure it won't be her last. Uh, we, are, we are going to go out now with, uh, speaking of advertisements, Mike, let's go out on my advertisement. See you next time. Do you like what you see? Would you consider supporting me? T-shirts for sale. I got T-shirts for sale. Everyone with